Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I appreciate it very much. Um, as the title say, I'm going to just quickly look at the diseases, post-harvest diseases of stone fruit. Um, I think the session being about plant pathogens and plant diseases, there are a, a few reoccurring themes, and especially there will be similarities now with um, Dr. Julia's talk. But um, I also highlight um, the overlapping things, which I think is important for control of stone fruit diseases. Okay, stone fruit, it's peaches, nectarines, and plums. And ideally, we would like this fruit to get to our consumers in a perfectly healthy, edible, and nutritional state. But unfortunately, that is not the reality. We have to sometimes deal with losses due to decay. Now why decay is important is because it results in economic loss. And this is right through the production train, um, chain. From the producer through to the packhouse, the export to the local market, market, the retailer and the consumer. So the management of decay is very important from that point of view. And we can have economic gain if we manage to um, manage decay successfully. So let's have a look at what causes decay in stone fruit. Fungi are the main causal organisms um, of post-harvest stone fruit decay. Now there are three important fungi. They are Botrytis cinerea, Monolinea laxa, and Penicillium expansum. So Botrytis cinerea, we also saw this micrograph um, with Dr. Julia's uh, talk. This is what it looks like under the microscope. And it causes gray mold. And you can, you can see the typically sort of gray colored um, spores forming on the, on the fruit. And then post-harvest, this is a very, very nice photograph of the gray and homogeneous um, spores that you'll see forming on um, a stone fruit. This is what monolinear laxa looks like under the micro, um, microscope. And this disease we tend to see in the pre-harvest phase more often, and it has a more brown um, discoloration of the fruit, and the fungal growth seem to be a bit more clustered. It's not, it's not homogeneous growth. So the disease will begin as a, as a soft brown rot, and then you'll see the fungal um, growth coming forth from the rot. And then later on, it will have very characteristic tuft-like growth with the, the brown discoloration. So the brown and the gray look very similar, but if you, if you look closely, you'll be able to distinguish um, that color in the spores. Then there's Penicillium expansum. This is also a post-harvest uh, fungal disease of many, many crops around the world, including oranges. If you see that green orange in your fruit bowl, that's also caused by a penicillium species. This is what it looks like, blue mold on nectarines, um, blue mold on plums. And the question now is, how do, how do these food become infected? What is the process that, that, that causes decay? So basically what happens, okay, we have got two infection cycles. There will be, in the pre-harvest stage, in the orchard, there will be a few things that happen that will contribute to the post-harvest uh, disease. And then also we have a post-harvest cycle, which means after we've harv harvested the fruit, there will be some aspects that contribute to, to decay. So the pre-harvest infection cycle only, um, is only relevant to Botrytis cinerea, the gray mold, and also to Monolinea laxa, the, the brown mold. And here the important uh, point of protection is the blossoms. Blossoms are incredibly susceptible to both of these fungi. It can easily be infected by Monolinea laxa and Botrytis cinerea, and the protection of the blossoms are really important. But that is not all. The nutrition in your orchard plays an important role in the, um, the resilience of your trees and um, how they will be able to withstand diseases, especially if you have high f um, nitrogen fertilization that could also contribute to a greater um, infection in the orchard. Then very important, and this is a theme that reoccurs throughout this, the t talks we've had in the session, is the sanitation in the orchard floor. Only also for the palm diseases and the stone um, fruit diseases, you'll have these 
um, rotten fruit uh, lying on the orchard floor. Sometimes they'll still be hanging in the tree. And um, we have to get rid of those because it is a source of inoculum. It's a place where the fungus survives and it will cause a subsequent infection. Um, then also our environmental stresses. And one thing that's not seen as such an important thing for disease necessarily is, is drought because we associate wetness, leaf wetness often with, with um, fungal infections. But um, any kind of environmental stress will change the way that the fungi infect. Then, um, particularly in the pre-harvest phase, the brown rot and the grey mold infect the blossoms. But once again, the way in which these fungi could um, result in infection is also governed by the survival and the reproduction of the fungi and the environmental conditions that allow them to survive in the orchard and infect the blossoms. And then we also mentioned the latent infection. So once that blossom has been infected, the fruit start growing, you have young fruit, they become mature fruit, and there is no visible symptoms of the disease on, this, on the tree. But once the fruit is harvested, we go into the infection cycle in the post-harvest um, arena. Now the post-harvest infection cycle is relevant to all three of these pathogens, botrytis, uh, monolinea, and penicillium. And also in the, in the apples and pears, this is basically how this happens. The whole decay story starts with a fresh um, fruit. Then it would um, get a wind from somewhere. It could be a skin abrasion. It could be punctures by insects, specifically sometimes cracks. But it's not always visible with the eye. It can also be microscopic damage or um, natural um, mi microscopic openings. And then you have the fungus that infects in those um, wounded areas. And then as the fungus grows inside the fruit tissue, you get greater and greater areas of decay. And later on, it results in these um, okay, um, examples of, of spores that form in those decayed areas. Now, this is the, what those um, fruit would look like in reality, just from my schematic presentation over to what it lo really looks like. And then the important thing from here is that those spores that formed on the decayed fruit, they are basically the source of new fungal infections. So if you have wounds here in your, in your um, stored fruit in the cold room or for any other reason, those infected fruit will become, will cause um, decay in your healthy fruit. So that's important why we are also have to get rid of decayed trees, decayed fruit as soon as we can because it is con uh, contagious. It goes and it infects our healthy fruit and trees. Then the one most important aspect in terms of decay and decay development is maturity of your fruit. So it's a very important driver in the extent of decay. Now let's quickly answer the question of how can these diseases be managed. And the first thing, of course, is a fungicide application in the orchard at the time of blossoming. It can be more than one to try and protect your blossoms against um, gray, mold and blue, uh, gray mold and brown rot. And then here I show the removal of the fruit so that you have better sanitation there. There are some other fungicide applications in the orchard that I won't speak about because I'm not actually the pre harvest specialist. It's um, Backer would have told us a bit more about that. And then as you can see now, wounds are of major importance. So if we look at the places where we can get fruit wounding, it is at harvesting, at handling, and at, in, in packing. So this is the places where we should be very, very careful to see to it that we um, don't wound the fruit. And then, as, I, as you can see, the importance of the fungal um, transfer from diseased fruit to healthy fruit, you um, have to remove your um, discarded fruit. Don't leave them right next to the packing line. And this is one of the things I see most often in poem and stone fruit um, packing houses are big bins of, of very diseased fruit standing right next to the packing line, and, and that mm. can cause trouble. And then also we've got to clean and sanitize our equipment and our surfaces and our general working areas. So as I said, maturity is of major importance and there are um, factors that govern maturity. And the one most important thing is maturity at harvesting. 
if, you, if your food is too mature at the point where you harvest it, you, you're just setting yourself up for um, having trouble in terms of decay. Then um, the waiting period in warm orchards after we've all, um, harvested, the fruit the time they stand in the bins should be minimized. And then we can hold back maturity through cold storage, and the cold storage also restricts the growth of the fungus. Then you've got the post harvest application of fungicide, and this is where in the um, stone fruit packing lines, they've got um, post harvest um, fungicide being applied by atomizer. As with all kind of fungicide applications, the correct dose sheets, the spray deposition, the volume, all those kinds of things are very crucial. Once again, keeping maximum residue levels in mind. So in summary, um, this slide is just to say exactly what I've um, said just now. Post harvest is the case in stone fruit, which is brown rot, gray mold, and blue mold are the, are the most important um, re and results in economic loss. Pre-harvest measures in the orchard, as, or, such as orchard sanitation, um, post-harvest wounding are determinants of the level of decay that will be experienced. Losses might be minimized by uh, um, accurate management practices. Um, then that is harvesting at optimum maturity, as I pointed out, prevention of wounds, and applying post-harvest fungicide. And then finally, our cooling conditions slows the maturation of the fruit, whilst inhibiting the fungal growth. And that's also important for optimal decay control. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am a sole proprietor, and you're welcome to contact me for any information. Thank you, Ida. Thank you.